Hey guys, this is the deciding factor. I'm John. And I'm Alton. And we are joined by Barbara today, and we are going to discuss homeschooling versus public schooling. So stay tuned and enjoy. Everyday life issues broken down to help you build your own opinions on the issues that matter most. Coming to you from Austin, Texas, this is The Deciding Factor with your host, Alton Hill and John Herzog. All right, like we were talking about, we are going to discuss homeschooling and public schooling and which one might offer something different than the other does. So to help guide us through this conversation, I have Barbara Brandline. She is an author, an urban family wife. She is also doing homeschooling for her four special needs kids. She also has her new book called Olive and tells the story of the world through the eyes of a nonverbal, medically fragile five-year-old girl and draws on her experiences raising kids with mitochondrial disease. She says uh, that she has been uh, she has been featured in a number of radio shows and podcasts across the country, both here in the U.S. and the U.K. Uh, she also engages her listeners on topics related to special needs parenting, homeschooling, even though we don't expect to talk about it right now, but we are, and why your life doesn't have to be normal to be good. How are you doing, Barbara? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So, uh, before we were talking, you started showing us some of your, uh, your designs. <laughs> you see the sleeves? Yeah. Yeah, she, she's they go, all, yeah, they do go further up. Yeah, so so for those that are listening and not watching the video version of this, uh, she's got some sleeves on both arms, uh, but you just recently got a new one, right? Yeah, uh, I've been uh, with the same tattoo artist for years now, and we're just looking for spare patches of skin. So we found one, and uh, we're working on filling that. And he was telling me a story about one of his recent clients, and it's always the ones you don't expect. You know the guys you see on the streets that are like the tough guys with their bikes? They are the ones that cry bar none. And uh, so he had a guy in that was, I think he was getting a chest piece or something like a little legitimately painful. Right. And uh, I think by hour three, he starts to sort of moan, like, huh, huh. <laughs> wait, wait, moan and or by this cry? Point, he's so annoyed. Yeah. Bonafide. But, but this much moaning, this much, you know, weeping, he says, do you need a kazoo? So we could just make music while you're doing this. And of course you went out and then the next day goes on Amazon. You can get a package of 16 kazoos for like nothing. So he now has them in his shop for anyone that gets a little too vocal, like at least make music with it. You know, oh. I'm thinking it might be useful in parenting. No kidding. That's what I was thinking, man, I'm going to run out of kazoos quick. Run my right. <laughs> they might be able to reuse it if it's just your kid, you know, ah, that's true. <laughs> oh, man. Just keep that in your pocket. Whining though. Oh, Which is kind of, I, you know, so <clears throat> for me to kind of introduce where I'm coming from today, I have four daughters and I, I guess three school age daughters. I've never homeschooled in my life. This year we made the decision to homeschool. So I'm like a month in to homeschooling. And when I say I'm really the missus because yeah you know what do I do around here anyway but uh yeah so I have a lot of uh, questions around that and a lot of those have to do with whining so so I'm glad you're here Barbara yeah I, I am too because I've got a different scenario but somewhat similar so I've got four kids as well uh, we are being kind of forced into the whole homeschooling thing but it's through the public school and it's supposedly going to be temporary, but they'll give us the option to do homeschooling for the rest of the year, or we can have them go back in person, of course. They want everybody to wear a mask 24-7. They're going to have plexiglass on both sides or all three sides of the desk. and it's, mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. They want them to all walk single file through the hallway, one direction, and then go out a different, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy. Oh, it's intense. 
Yeah, my my, uh, the, my church over here actually meets in a school, and uh, it was a private school, and they were trying to jump through all the hoops to, to get to start, right? And so uh, we show up. I have I also have four kids. I feel like we've hit an even dozen here. Um, <laughs> and my son is eight years old. And so the first thing we see when we walk in is the, I don't know what else to call it, but like a, a robot, basically. And it's the screen, and it's going to take your temperature, and it's going to check if you're wearing a mask. And that day, he was wearing a bandana, okay? And so he's eight, and all I can picture is like, okay, Okay, multiply that times the number of children that go to school, right? He's like popping his face up into the screen, trying to see if he can make the temperature go higher or lower. He's like, you know, <laughs> mask down, mask up, mask down. It, and I just thought you could not pay me to man the door at this school. Like that just looks horrible to me. But yeah, everyone's jumping the hoops. Yeah. I mean, oh, okay. So we have this podcast that's called The Deciding Factor. And we usually talk a lot about pros, cons. Here's some reasons. I got to be honest. Public school dictating homeschool learning, I think it's got to be worst case scenario. I mean, right out of the gate, like maybe I changed my mind through this podcast. And I'm like, <laughs> There's pros and cons. And that seems like it's taking a lot of the cons from each side. But what do I know? Anyway. So before you go into details about the homeschooling, um, one of the things that that jumped out to me that I know nothing really about is, is the mitochondrial disease that you had mentioned about. Um, you, you say your kids have this, is that right? Yeah, all four of my kids have it. So we are a, a two feeding tube house. We are a, a medically complicated house. And uh, it's part of what got me into even having these conversations like what business do I have even talking to people who are getting thrown into sudden homeschooling or, or remote learning um, because I did it turns out that uh, when my kids were first diagnosed they were little and we were doing masks and sanitizer back before it was cool we had a sign on the door you know that said if you have it beat it if you're sick and um we initially started homeschooling um, because of their medical complications. It was just, I couldn't even fathom sending this much uh, demanding, re- such demanding medical requirements to a classroom, even if they were in a special needs classroom, even if they had access to a nurse. Let's suppose best case scenario, you've only got 10 kids in a class, and I don't know a single teacher that has that situation, but let's suppose, right? Um my kids at that time, you know, when they're starting, they're getting tube feeds every two hours. They're getting medicine through the tube five times a day. And I'm like, I just don't even, and, and on top of that, the developmental delays that they were facing, they would, they required specialized attention in school if they were ever going to learn. Now, right now, my oldest is 13 and her sister is 12 and, and they're the two that, you know, got me started on this. Um, they're successful students. We've been able to change our life, change how we school to accommodate this. So I do have compassion for people that are thrown into it this year. Like, what the heck? You know, this is, I've been there. I get it. Man. So, I, you know, I, I've always been raised as a public school kid. All of my kids have. Now, one of them. Uh, she, she ended up doing some moving around and for a little period of time, she did the homeschooling and she enjoyed it, you know, but, uh, it was kind of at your own pace type thing. Uh, Mm -hmm. she still liked it, but you know, there were the socializing, I guess it was one of the biggest things that I was seeing. There's a huge difference on and, you know, for somebody who needs to be social, how, how do you kind of balance those two if you do homeschool? I guess here's what I would say. Um, and I do, t- I'm going to preface this with, I do tend to be someone that looks for the option C and everything that's being said. So I apologize. <laughs> I'm gonna say option C, you're a homeschooler that socializes. Okay. The, the thing that I would say, and that I think that pretty much every American family has to be looking at right now is that we have a preconceived picture of what schooling our kids means 
right? And if you're coming from a public school background, then socialization is usually one of the things that we hold up as why it's better, why I'm going to be able to offer my kids what they need. I, I have an extrovert. I have, I don't want my kids to grow up being those ones that wear the tube socks up to their knees. All legit. Um, but I think <laughs> that we've got to step, look at this a little bit differently. Yeah, I was related to that kid. I, I'm familiar. Um, but you got to look at this a little bit differently and say, uh, if this is about educating as opposed to just getting school hours, which at this point, that's what we're, lock, we're looking at, right? You, you've already said, if someone is allowed to go to public school this year, it is with massive restrictions. You got to deal with what you think about how well they're being socialized inside the plastic bubble, right? Um, my kids have not ever spent a day in public school and they're infinitely more friendly than I am. They go up and they talk to people. This becomes something that you decide as your family, what is our norm? Um, one of the things that I would challenge, I guess, that I would challenge is uh, homeschooling also, it doesn't need to be just in your home. If you live in a neighborhood and there are kids in your neighborhood, who's to say that you don't turn this into a community system where you go down to the Smith house for English and you're coming to our house for math. Um, I know people that do that and they do it very successfully. There's also, you know, in the States right now, there are so many different co-op type groups. There are so many ways to connect with other people that are doing this. I think that, um, again, option C here, I would say that actually homeschooling has greater potential for community. And I think that that's what we want for our kids more than socialization. It's not enough for them just to be around people that they don't ever connect with. We want them to grow up with communities that keep them rooted as they're growing up. Man, Barbara, you're dropping too many truth bombs on us this early in the <laughs> podcast, man. I no, drank my I, coffee before I started. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. And what I was thinking is, as you were saying that, so I have my own business. I haven't always had my own business, um, but for the last, let's just say five years, that's really what I've been thinking about is like how to quit. Oh yeah. John's got my hat on. Uh, it's a nice logo. How, how to quit my nine to five and then just crush my own business. Cause I want the freedom. And what I was hearing when you were talking about that is, yeah, there's so many misconceptions with homeschool. And I'm like raising my hand. I'm like, you weirdo homeschool kids. Like I almost told John, John, the deciding factor should be, will my kids be weird if I homeschool them? Um, <laughs> but I thought that might be offensive. So, Oh, I would have said to, to do that. That would have been the best. And oh, yes, <laughs> they'll be able to spell. They'll be able to read. Yeah. And yeah, they're going to do that weird sock thing. But they'll outgrow it. They'll get married someday and that goes away. It's okay. But what I, I, what I've been thinking is about the freedom of homeschooling. And so how many kids do we know that are like their parents? Well, look, if you're homeschooling, there may be some of that involved. Um, what we did with regards to this co-op, because I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I'm just saying, I don't want my kids to go to school that way. So Heather, let's figure it out. And she's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and uh, so we're like, okay, we need to teach the kids another language. And we're like, well, what language? And we're like, ah, oh, we have some uh, <laughs> deaf and hearing impaired people at church. So we're like, well, let's just do that. So they send us to this college age girl who is deaf and is willing to teach ASL. And she's like, yeah, I'll do it for 20 bucks an hour. She's like 23. So she said, yeah, we can do two classes a week for 40 bucks. And I told Heather, I'm like, well, that doesn't seem so bad. I'm like, but we're doing it on zoom anyway. Like what if we got a couple other people involved and they could all learn together and we could all pay less and she could make more. So <laughs> what's happened, is, <laughs> there's this 23 year old girl and I don't know what it is, but she's making like 50 to $80 an hour now. Nice. I'm not paying for the class. She's getting double or triple about what she, you know, for what she wanted. Mm -hmm. And now all these other kids are getting the opportunity to learn. So anyway, I was just thinking about that at homeschool. There's so many options oh, that yeah. you can do now. And now they have their own like little, like they're the sign language community. Now my kids are like, 
instead of me spelling out the words to like stay above their head, they're like signing to each other. And I'm like, what are they saying? Heather, did you, did you go to class? Ah. It can backfire. No, that's, you know, we did the same thing. One of my daughters had, um, although I didn't have the access to the grade 20 something that would have helped me. Um, but my kids had major speech delays. One of them still does. And so sign language is, yeah, that was our language of choice. And it turns out, you know, I look at it, I think, uh, not only do we get to choose that, we get to choose how we use it. And that's an employable skill. That's something that you want to talk about, you know, sign language interpreters, there's jobs for that. And I look at even my special needs daughter and I think that's something you could do. That's something you could do as you get into high school as you. So yeah, that, but what you're describing there, you went and you found your community. Are my kids going to be weird if I homeschool them? Uh huh. <laughs> so bring more people along, you know, weird is defined by what normal weird, is, so right? They're normal. <laughs> I love that. Just, yeah. <laughs> but I think that community mindset is, is really, if there is a key to succeeding at this, that's what it is. The, the current, the, the current normal for remote learning through the public school looks like the hardest thing I have ever seen. My kid's going to you know be stuck on a screen all day. Uh, I, I was talking to a teacher that had to switch to remote learning this fall and it sounds so intense for everyone. I think, okay, now I understand loving your teachers and I understand loving the classroom that you're in, but can we all admit that we're not actually in it? Like we're not getting that experience this fall. So whether someone stays homeschooling forever, I think that there are some mental hurdles that we could get over now to say, yeah, this is at least something that I could do better now. But then again, uh, some of the kids might not be able to develop that uh, teacher crush like some of us did growing up. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's so important for all you homeschooling moms to get tattoos so that you can be the cool one in the neighborhood. Is that? So, you know, yes. I'm glad. Hang on, John, because this is I've been just looking to give this to someone. <laughs> the, the first day of school for us with my wife teaching my children, right? Homeschooling. Um, I'm like trying to be normal. And so I'm like, so how was your first day of school? And they're like, ah, you know, it's okay. I'm like, well, what was your teacher like? And I'm like, ah, she's okay. And I'm like, not? <laughs> and they're like, Dad? I'm like, look, I'm just asking. And, uh, and they're like, yeah, I guess she's all right. And, uh, and then later I was, I was telling them like, don't tell your mom, but I met your teacher and that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> no, that's fantastic. Anyway, uh, I enjoyed it. That is really funny. And I think that's how you're supposed to cheer on your wife to keep doing this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> quite frankly. And that's why my kids will be weird now. Cause now they're spending time with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Save us all. Um, no, but in the news, right. So there's a bunch of richer people that are doing kind of what you said, where they're coming together and they're building these small communities and they'll pay somebody to come teach all the neighborhood kids and they're doing it that way. So the, the thing that brings to my mind is if you do homeschooling, do you have to have somebody there to help them the whole time? Or can you still do homeschooling while two parents are working? Cause I don't think everybody can mm-hmm. afford it. Oh, yeah. No, I would agree. And I think that that's one of the problems that a lot of families are facing right now. And I don't mean this to sound critical. I promise. This is just reality. School is daycare for a lot of families. Yes. Right? I mean, that's that's real so that you can go to work. And I guess the thing that I would, again, challenge to think slightly differently is maybe your school doesn't happen eight to three. Maybe your schooling happens uh, part of the day with grandma, who's going to be watching them anyway, because you got to go to work. Um, Maybe part of the day, you know, maybe your school happens in the evening. That is a thing. There are nocturnal homeschoolers that shift their schedule completely. I personally couldn't stay awake for it, but people do. And I think that that's the thing that we need to start looking at is that homeschooling, unlike public schooling, it fits you. So one of the families that I'm thinking of, um, they are homesteaders, okay? They're hardcore, going to raise all their food off the land. There are seasons of the summer that they are, well, not, not even just summer, spring. I would say spring and summer, that they're not doing school, okay? Because they're out actually like raising cattle and vegetables. So their school season is shifted slightly. It's to match their life. 
And I think that when we can start to think of our homes, not so much as schools, but as educational environments, because they are. Whether we're doing this on purpose or not, your kids are nonstop learning from you. And they are nonstop learning from your home. It's just a matter of, am I going to do this on purpose, Mm -hmm. right? And if you are a small business owner, well, you've got an education happening right there. So their book work time might need to happen at a different time of day. Um, But to get back to your question, no, I I don't think that the key is having a certified teacher there all the time. You got to look at your state requirements to see what's expected for homeschoolers, but for most states that I'm aware of, someone can correct me, but you, you need to have, uh, you know, you're basically signing off saying, I am going to school my kids. Mm -hmm. And from there, I think the number of ways to do this are endless. And most of them, I don't think involve sitting with one teacher that you've hired all day. That to me sounds like school. You know, like from the marketing side of this, I think, uh, you can't market I mean, homeschool. I, well, that's the problem. <laughs> like the thing is that, uh, so Heather, <clears throat> she used to be a vegetarian. Now she eats meat because I just brainwashed her. But she still <laughs> buys the veggie burgers. And she's like, Alton, you want a veggie burger? And I'm like, I can't eat it. I just can't because you called it a veggie burger. <laughs> and a burger is not made of veggies. Now, if you just said, this is like, a veggie montage and you're going to grill it or something. (laughs) Then I'd be like, man, this is pretty good. Like, man, if I could double stack these with some cheese, I'm all in, but because you call it a veggie burger, I'm out, you know, it's not cow. Mm -hmm. I feel like homeschool has the wrong connotation for what is possible. And it's like this remote learning is kind of a euphemism for, well, I don't know, but, I'm not a fan, but, and it's me, even education is different than learning, you know? And I tell people like, if you're not going to the, the university of YouTube, you're missing out because it's all there. Everything. I don't know. Pick a question. It's there. Everything you need to know. It's right there. You just have to find it. And I uh, hope none of my clients are listening, but <laughs> I have to learn stuff every single day. <laughs> Turns out I don't know it all. And I think, helping the kids learn, (laughs) helping your children learn how to learn is, uh, is a big thing because leave the nest, then what? They got to be able to problem solve. And, you know, I think, uh, probably every generation says that, but I, I, I find myself thinking maybe, especially right now, maybe especially right now, I want my kids to be developing critical thinking skills that I don't see in the public schools. I, I mean, just the, the response to the COVID alone, I think we're missing some steps in the critical thinking. So I take my kids, I brave a, a pharmacy the other day. I really don't enjoy, I live in the Seattle area in Washington state. And um, I, I am a fairly recent transplant over here. So we came from uh, the other side of the state farming country. Anyway, this has been different for me and uh, I don't thoroughly enjoy heading out in public just right about now. It feels a little bit like the hunger games, you know, just oh, it's a yeah. killer be killed feeling. Yeah. It's not, the purge. not that really fun. 2020. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> so I, I take them in and the, the pharmacy is all decorated for Halloween already. Cause you know, we're September. Um, and one of the skeletons is wearing a mask and my kids to their credit stopped and they're like, it doesn't have lungs. What is the mask supposed to be doing? It doesn't have lungs. And uh, there are questions like this that come up all the time. And I think, yeah, if you were having that train of thought, that question in a public school, I feel zero confidence that anyone would actually teach you how to think through this problem. You're right. Why is, why are any of us wearing masks? But really, why is a skeleton with no lungs wearing masks? Like there are things that are happening in the world right now that I want my kids irregardless of what they conclude, quite frankly, I want them to know how to think about it. And they have to learn how to learn. They have to learn how to go get the information that they need. And I think that that is the distinct power of homeschooling. You know, so speaking of schooling and this common sense type stuff, you know, my daughter's, my oldest daughter is doing volleyball at school. And so they started making them practice and do games wearing a mask still. And 
Honestly, it, it pisses me off because why would you do all this extraneous workout and have something that's going to block your airway, right? So my that daughter, nuts. yeah, my daughter in particular, she, she started having moments where she feels really lightheaded and she pulls her mask down so she can breathe. And of course the coaches and everybody are like, pull your mask up. What are you doing? Uh, I'm breathing over here. Is that okay? You know, but uh, it's stupid things like that. It's like, you know, the UIL is the sports people for all uh, education around Texas. And they specifically said, You'll wear a mask if you cannot social distance, which is the six-foot rule, and or you're working out. If you're working out, you do not have to wear a mask. Well, that includes games and practices. And volleyball, they mostly stay six feet apart as well. But, you know, they have this rule. Well, we had our first game that we could actually go to yesterday because we're not allowed to go to away games for whatever dumb reason. Um but the girls are still wearing the mask during the game. So is the other team. They're doing air high fives from the opposite side of the courts. It got really annoying. The The parents were talking to us up in the stands. We were like, they're hand sanitizing each other's hands during the timeouts. And it's like, guys, you're doing that. Then you're touching the ball that you've all touched. By the way, you've licked your hands, rubbed your shoes to get them to grip better. Uh, I mean, come on. What... How are we protecting ourselves, really? That mask, they've touched it 50 times or more oh, yeah. during the whole game. So you've just collected every germ that you've touched throughout the whole game. It's stupid. Like, there's no That's common insane. sense. Then on top of that, by the way, some of them walk home together, and they're not going to wear their mask. So they're still giving each other stuff. And then after the game, what did we do? Oh, the whole team wants to go out and eat. Are you going to wear a mask there? No, you're not. Yes, you are. I went to walk through the door. <laughs> you're going to buy those two masks that way it opens up when you open your mouth? The, the door, no, but it, the door is where the COVID is. So oh. you have to have a mask when you go through the door into your table, but there's no COVID at the table. So you can take your mask off. It's fine. That's a relief. Yeah. It's No, it's there's a madness things. there. Yeah. I uh, see. I like to think and maybe this is just ornery, but that uh, you're probably raising the kind of daughter that, you know, when she pulls down her mask to breathe and they say, what are you doing? You say, well, I'm pausing to lick the ball. Obviously, what else would I be doing? You know, I think this, there's just so much about what's happening that um, it's it is seeping into kids thinking. Oh, this is the best part is when the coach is on the sideline trying to talk through her mask and everybody's like, what are you saying? She's like, oh, yeah. This is what we need to do. Yeah. Come on, guys. Yeah, this is like, and I don't know how much in, in homeschool this is, but this is very much behind my own decision. You know, I think that there's some people have decided that, you know, remote learning or whatever, like, I don't want my kid to be around other kids, so I'm going to do the remote learning or I'm going to homeschool because I'm afraid of coronavirus or, you know, people getting sick or I have someone that lives in my house or that I interact with a lot that's at risk. And so I don't want to take that risk. That had nothing to do with my decision to homeschool my children. It was exactly what you ex explained, John. For me, I was like, my own opinion because I do believe myself to be a very independent thinker. And I know, um, you know, I've heard studies that when you actually use your brain to problem solve and, you know, for, for someone to just go, the skeleton doesn't have lungs. Why would he have that's silly. That requires like a lot of brain power. And when you, when, when the scientists actually try to measure that, it's like to require that energy to think and process that is um, activate some of the same uh, like pain. It's like pain when they look at your brain and when people are thinking, it's like triggering the same spots in your brain that if you were to hurt yourself. So when people try to solve like complex math problems and things like that, it's why people don't like to do that because it's actually messing with your head literally. And so it takes a lot of effort. And I was like, I don't want my children being exposed to living in fear, being told like, this is how you have to do it because I said so, not because it makes sense. I'm like, that's what 
I'm afraid of <laughs> is that my mm-hmm. kids just get browbeat into like submitting to browbeat. That... Is that your word of the day? It's a good is one. It, I like isn't it. Is that what it is? You know, like how <laughs> yeah. you take that mask down and try to breathe, you know? I don't like, think I've ever heard that. Really? Uh, yeah, oh, browbeaten? Or, yeah. Or, man. I can't I think I of really complicated words, you know, they got to be simple. So <laughs> anyway, I'm glad you brought that up, John, because for me, that's the center of it all is about keeping, uh, kind of protecting that innocence of their individuality and their own reasoning instead of like, no, this is how you think and conform. Uh, that's kind of what I'm allergic to and what I've been thinking. That's what like tipped me over the edge for, mm-hmm keeping my girls at home. So, uh, yeah. I don't know if it's true where you are in Texas, but one of the things that I'm hearing uh, in Washington state too, is that even families that have decided to do remote learning through the public schools, parents are required to sign waivers promising not to be in the room. They're promising not to sit in on class. And I think, now hang on, you're in my house. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think, you know, this is maybe it's all it's doing um, is shining a spotlight on the system as it already exists. Okay, this has all been true. Okay, that we as parents don't tend to be as involved, especially as they get older. I mean, you think about it when this starts to matter the most we are pushed further and further back. And now I think you're, you're sitting in my house all day on this screen, but I'm not supposed to know what they're saying. I mean, there's a. Man. Texas might be smarter than that. Washington has issues, but um, it's something that I just thought that's alarming. That's alarming to me that not only do I know for sure that there is, like you said, they're getting browbeaten and stuff like this, um, but that I'm not even allowed to be there to help them sort through it. I can't even hear what's being said. That's a red flag to me. Oh man. So, you know, one of the things that as, as far as not being in the room, if there's a test, yeah, we're not supposed to be in there. They don't want us helping mm-hmm. them, obviously. I don't want to take right. their test form, so screw that anyways. Yeah. Been there, done that, yeah. <laughs> but uh, there was, I heard of one school around the Austin area that uh, didn't want them to be dressed in pajamas. And then that Leander, that's what it was. Leander School J- District, which is north of Austin, said <laughs> that you could not be in uh, PJs or anything like that to show up to class on your your video screen, so uh, or you would you'd be punished somehow, whatever. Uh, I thought that was kind of ridiculous, but like, come find me. I'll be sitting at home. <laughs> and off the video in my pajamas. Yeah. yeah I'm like, oh, sheesh. I mean, You're going to enforce a rule as far as your clothing goes at home. Whatever. I guess you know. Here's the thing for me. And maybe it's because I've been learning more as I'm running my own business. Like John and I have talked about it some that once you're a business owner and you're just kind of working on your business, if you don't have a lot of employees, it's just kind of like you flying, you know, around and talking to clients and stuff. And it's like, well, I still need a network of people to engage with on my level. And so I guess I've kind of like, found the people that I want to associate with and and continue to associate with. And I see how much that can impact like John and I, you know, we get to meet people like you, Barbara, who are doing something who want to uh, like produce for the world, right? Like, Hey, I'm going to come on the show. I'm going to say what I have to say. I'm going to put up with these crazy guys and hopefully some people listen and they learn and they get exposed to some new ideas. And we at least, get them to think and maybe see a different shade of something that they've looked at before or draw their attention to something and, and, and bring value. And when I think about the environment that the current situation is in, it just really makes me question, um, like, is that the environment that I want to like deliberately introduce my children mm-hmm. into, but let's, let's talk a little bit because I want to get greedy here on this podcast a little bit. So the kids are like, this is nuts. They're having to adjust, right? Like bless their hearts. They got ripped away from their friends and reality for them. And here they are. It's not like maybe uh, your kids were Barbara, where it just 
this is it. But like, that was their normal, you know, there's a lot of kids now who are maybe feeling lost. And as parents, um, maybe we don't know how to deal with that. Like, um, you know, now Alton has to be a teacher. Alton doesn't know how to be a teacher. He's like, maybe a podcaster, <laughs> like, you know, so I think both children and parents are kind of stepping into these new roles and there's got to be some adjusting. Do you have thoughts on that and how you can help parents stay sane and maybe mm -hmm. uh, keep the kids from going crazy too? I think that's probably actually objection one that I hear from people when I meet them and they find out that I homeschool, they're like, Oh, I could never do that. We'd kill each other. Right. <laughs> like that. That's real. Um, two things are coming to mind. One is that you're right. You are both being thrown into this and it's unexpected. So admit to your kids that you don't have a clue how to do it either. Depending on the age of your kid, you know, I guess I'm thinking about the, you know, middle school, high schoolers that, you know, they really do have their system, their social group set up at school. Um, I think, you know, you need to decide as a family how afraid you are of this virus. If you are actually okay with meeting with other people, meet with other people don't don't have homeschooling equal crawling under a rock you know instead i think um you, you sit down with if you've got older kids you're sitting down with those older kids with the community that you have found if it's an aunt and uncle or someone that you work with you know you sit down and you map out the plan one of the things that i think um you can present this in a way that there's opportunity Mm. is that there are lots of kids at public school that are not learning in a way that they are the best at, mm. right? Um, so, uh, see if I can think of an example here. So uh, it's be like history in our house. Um, half of my kids listen while I read something out loud and they draw what they're hearing. So they, because of some limitations we have for writing, okay? So they illustrate the story and then they, they tell it back to me, okay? Um, I have one daughter that thrives on independent study. I can hand her the book and she will go read it and it's great. I think that you can sit with your kids and help both of you to get excited about it by saying, okay, let's talk through in your school last year, what was the hardest thing about it? How could we do it differently at home? If, uh, you know, my, I am married to someone with ADD. Okay. He was, as a student, uh, his best grades came after we got married. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> it, 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 I wrote his papers, but he remembers everything. Um, I think that he was one that would have said, yeah, early on, he would have done better if he was physically active while he was working. Your family has an educational superpower. You just don't know it yet. So if you are a family of ADD individuals that would rather be kayaking all weekend, then you're probably not going to be sitting at a kitchen table for eight hours. You're probably going to be doing jumping jacks while you do multiplication tables. And you're probably going to be out in nature learning science. I think that you can do that with your kids and talk about, you can get them excited about what is coming and it can take a load off you. As the parent, if you are expecting that you have to become this teacher, you know, think of your, your, your best teacher and you're picturing that that's who you need to be all day long, you will fail. <laughs> okay. You need a cheerleader too. Someone to remind you that you can do this. But if you are looking at this as I already have strengths, you know what? Like list the things that you are good at, list the things that they are good at, and then design what your education is gonna look like. The possibilities for curriculum are endless. So find the one that works for you. My best curriculum finds were uh, from a local bookstore, the gal that owned it homeschooled. And I went in and I said, I have one child that can't talk uh, and I have to figure out how do I know if she's learning how to read? <laughs> she had great ideas. People have done it before you I think when you get to the place where you can sort of allow your mind to think, okay, maybe I could do this. Well, then from there, it's, it's a, it's a free for all of making it something good, but yeah, don't cut them off from their people. You'll be happier if you are both engaged with other people. So, yeah. so I've got two, uh, two good questions for you here before I ask them though. Everyone that's listening, please uh, click subscribe, uh, like us, and make sure you uh, follow us on our next episode or all of our other episodes as well. But I say that in case I start to make you mad going forward here. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> we might time. we I might lose half the show. Yeah, we might lose half the show, so I'm going to make sure I get that in beforehand. Um, no, no. So you keep talking about these communities. Where exactly would someone find those communities? That's the question. Okay, yes. Yeah, um, there's a couple of places that you could start just off the top of my head. Um, classical Conversations is one. It's a group nationwide that a lot of people are turning to right now, in part because uh, there's built-in people there. Uh, if I can be totally blunt, they're way smarter than I am. And so they are the people, I've called a couple of Classical Conversations people over the years and said, hey, uh, what would you do for this, that, and the other thing? Um, they do also actually meet in person. So I guess I, I can't say how they're doing it all this fall, but that's a start. Um, I think I would also start having conversations with people that are already in your life uh, at your church, find your local retired person. You will be amazed how many people already have experience with this or have opinions about it. <laughs> I, uh, I have, am encountering increasingly this year, people that are retired engineers that are looking for their encore thing. Mm-hmm. Their encore thing might be your kid. You know, they might be able to teach um, or to come alongside you. Um, so I would start there. Um, and honestly, on a really basic level, like what you were saying on YouTube, <laughs> Google it. Google homeschooling communities in your area. Um, there is just, there's Facebook groups. There is just so much stuff now compared to even when I started this like 10 years ago. Just, yeah. So you almost need like a homeschoolers anonymous for, for parents. Is there groups like that? Like, oh yeah. Guys, I need help. Oh yeah. No, it exists. And it's, that would be probably my other real encouragement to someone that's deciding that maybe they can take the leap is you got to find yourself a cheerleader. You need to find someone that will come alongside you when you think, yep, only one of us is making it out of this house alive today and it's not going to be them. (laughs) You know, you need someone that can remind you that what you're doing is worthwhile and that it will get better because it does. So you did mention the fact that you could do this even in the evenings if, say, we both work during the day, right? Mm-hmm. Let me also put it this way. I can't do teaching to my kids. I don't have the patience for some of them. You know, we've got dyslexia, ADHD, um, some other things going on with some of the kids. I can't do it. Like I, I, I ser- Especially to go down to, you know, our youngest one's eight years old and our oldest is almost 15, so we got anywhere from, you know, third grade all the way up to freshman in high school. I, I, I don't have the time, the patience to really teach them. So, but I want them to homeschool because I'm sick of the public school. <laughs> How do I make it happen? <laughs> That's a dilemma. First, you decide to. I know that sounds really petty, but the, the first thing would be, so your range of kids, that's pretty similar to where mine is. I've got like seventh grade down to second Okay, four kids. And um, it will be an ugly transition time, but they will figure out, you know, you will figure out your schedule. Maybe you don't have the patience to sit and read with a dyslexic child, but if you already know that you have a dyslexic child, then odds are you already have maybe a therapist or a, you probably already have people in your corner that helped you with the diagnosis. I would go back to them and say, what is the most effective way for me to school this particular child. And if it's not you that can do it, go back to that community and start saying, how do I find those people? There are entire curriculums that are done through video. It could be that your older kids start out with a video, you know, learning and not so much like remote learning through the school, because this would be, you know, uh, you getting the lessons, it's done on your own time. You're not sitting in a classroom, you know, on zoom. Um, I would also say that maybe your thing isn't teaching, you know, having the patience to sit with the ADD kid, but you might be the one that takes that kid fishing. And it could be that that is where you're listening to audio books on the way and that that's where they're picking up what they learn about science that week. You do have something that you can offer the kid that is going to be unique to their education. I will say the public school homeschool version, right? It is. It sucks. They don't have their crap together because, you know, our kids have all got their little Chromebooks from school. They're all um, doing some form of a Zoom or whatever. But the young ones in particular, they don't know how to get to their next class. They don't have it all set up very easily. It's like, guys, my tax dollars are going to pay 
you to teach my kids. Mm-hmm. Yet you're not I want making a refund. It. Exactly. I want a refund yes. because you're making me do at least half the work because you're not setting it up properly. So, yep. I mean, it, and that's my point. Are you really yeah. saying that you can't do better than that? I bet you can. <laughs> I mean, I bet it might not look God, like what you're picturing, but I bet that it's better than what they're experiencing now staring at the screen. <laughs> well, like, let's, right? let's flip that over. Okay, John, if you're the ADD guy. I am the learn? ADD guy. What are you trying Ooh. to say? <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying, though. It's like, who better to teach an ADD kid than someone who has it? How do you learn? That's probably how they learn best. But, yeah, but, but, I'm telling you, I learned so much from my husband, him just explaining what the what the thing was that first got him to read. Uh, that's why when we started out, like, so our school day starts out with sort of a, all of us are together uh, and we sing and we do, we've got memorization stuff we do. We do jumping jacks. We do, like, I have them jump around through the whole thing because my eight-year-old, will remember everything I say if he's moving. My husband taught me that. Okay, but, but, okay, let me give a real-life scenario, though. (laughs) Sorry. I apologize ahead of time. (laughs) You know, you you teach them stuff like that when they show up for work the first day and they have a meeting and your kid's over there doing jumping jacks during the conference, they're going to get fired or people are going to be like, what the hell is wrong with you, you know? Or... Option C, you've oh. given them a place to have, you've given them a place to have, it drives my husband crazy too, really sorry about that, yeah, um, you've given them a place to work off their energy so that they actually know how to behave in public. You want to know who behaves in public? My kids do. I have yet to have to haul someone screaming out of, or doing jumping jacks, out of a store or out of a meeting. I think that what it is, is you are releasing the level of frustration that they are already having so that when they are... Uh, when they're in situations out in the world, you know, you have the opportunity there in your home to say, so this jumping check thing, we do that here, right? You know, you don't do that down at the Seven <laughs> Eleven. This is, and I, I think that that's, there's benefit to that. We all need somewhere that we can actually learn how we learn and not be restricted to a desk, right? We as adults need that. Well, Barbara, screw your options. See, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so let me let me add to that option. No, don't C. add to it. Come on. <laughs> and you can't take me as a like a credible source, okay? It's but when my kids start whining, and so I like go and check in on them. You know, I'm working out of the house and I'll go and drop in and try to be like, hey, dad cares here because I do. And Heather, you're not strangling any of them yet, right? And when I see them do this little whining, I'm like, shoot, in Alton school, there's corporal punishment, 10 squats. If they're all goofing off and I get that look from Heather, I'm like, hey, we're all doing 50 squats. Start it. And it's like, how many squats are the kids going to do before they're like, oh, I'm going to stop whining, you know? Well, maybe not today, but tomorrow when your legs are sore, you will. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, John, I'm that guy. And the funny thing that you mentioned that because I'm in this networking group, okay? I've been in this networking group going on two years, I guess. And uh, it's an international networking group. There's people in the group who are some heavy hitter business people. I respect them a lot and I get up on that thing in the morning and like one time they're like, Alton, what, is there something wrong with you? Cause you just, <laughs> you don't sit still. And I'm like, yo, I got energy, man. What, why are you sitting still? I'm happy. I'm ready to be. <laughs> and they're just like, okay. And like, I'm fixing to be the president of that group. So I think that there's some notion of the, Hey, yeah, he's the weird kid in the meeting. But, hey, who should be president next? Ah, we're going to pick this weird guy over there. Well, so, so going back to what you made, the, the question of, like, I know what an ADA kid, ADHD kid would, would want to talk to him and how, right? The problem is, is I can't offer that because one of the best teachers I had, he told stories of history just really in depth, and it really worked for me. I'm not that smart. Sorry. <laughs> But I'm not, but, you know. But and, can and you I only, read? Because if you can I read, I can, but I don't want to. Is the problem? <laughs> okay, but you could be sitting there with the audiobook. Would be my thing. Like no, maybe it's, it's not boring. you. I, okay. <laughs> Sorry, no, it's videos. I, you know, anything yeah. visually is really how I learn. Um, 
in, in the audio, you know, when you're in the audio, they'll say something like, let's take business, for example. Hey, what should you do for your benefits this next year? Could you do A, B, C? And all of a sudden, I'm like, I could do A, and if I tweak it just like this, and now I'm two chapters behind because I didn't pay attention. I was off in the la la land. So that, that's, that's the problem I have with reading and, and why I know it won't work for some of my kids. But Well, then it sorry. sounds like maybe you really do need an old person in your life that has stories to tell and time to tell them. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I, I don't mean to make this sound like it's the, the easiest thing. This is hard. Don't get me wrong. Homeschooling is the hardest thing I've ever done. I used to be a jazz pianist. I would rather get on stage and not have a clue what I was doing every single night, okay? I, this is hard. Yeah. What I'm saying is that it's worth it mm. for one, that there is a way. And that I think that if I look at my homeschooling now compared to that first year that we were thrown into it, we probably spent ugh, sheesh, at least five years where somebody cried every single day. Sometimes me, sometimes them. Okay. <laughs> um, and it's not like that anymore we did finally figure out kind of a rhythm that worked for us. So I'm not saying that this is in any way easy, but I think you will be amazed at the the quality of people that you collect in your life when you go out looking for them for this purpose. And I think that you will be surprised and your kids would be surprised um, how much they actually learn how to learn. It opens up the possibilities. If they are not spending all of their time with the busy work that is so often public school, that's time that they could actually be learning things that they are interested about, right? They can be further pursuing something. It just might take some time. So here, here's the biggest conflict I have when thinking about homeschooling, so I'll try not to get too rough. But sports. I had such a fantastic time in high school, not because of what I learned. It was being like I talked about earlier, social, but also building my self-esteem and everything through the sports that I played. I had way too much fun doing sports. I had so many memories that I still think about. I built friendships with people, and, I mean, even the bullies back in the day, I've had Facebook messages from where they're like, hey, John, what's going on? I'm like, you were a jerk to me. Why are you talking to me? (laughs) But okay, (laughs) you know? So... What, how, how can you, or is there a way to still make all of that happen? I was going to say, so go play sports. Okay. What's the, what, uh, I guess I can tell you, I, I was homeschooled up until, I don't know, eighth grade. And in my family, the norm was you played an instrument, you played a sport. I played sports all through until I totally ruined my foot, you know, sometime early high school. Um, you can, as a homeschooler, you, you're still part of the district, right? So you're still entitled to everything that public schoolers have. It's written into the law. So really? you want to go play varsity football? Go do it. Be really? good. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I- you're still paying taxes. You sign a, a declaration of intent at the beginning of the year that basically says, um, my kid is not truant. I am responsible for schooling them. But if you've got a special needs kids, they have access to every therapist through the district, every program they want to do. You want to go join clubs, you go do it. Um, same with sports. There's, I, I mean, I could say there are rec leagues, there are homeschool, you know, leagues, but they tend to not be terribly competitive because of all the stereotypes we've talked about. Um, I, personally, we went and played at the public schools. We played at private schools, and it was never a problem. Wow. That, that really is shocking. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, yeah. I, I never knew that. I, you know, and when you look at, say, football or baseball in particular, right, those here in Texas, you know, it kind of stops, I want to say, junior high-ish when it comes to the private leagues. If you mm-hmm. want to continue that career, you have to go to a school to get that done. The other trick to that is you have to have a PE class where you do, say, weightlifting or agilities for football, mm-hmm. which is normally midday, right before lunch. That way you can shower, have time to do that, and then go eat. And then you have practice either in the afternoon mm-hmm. or morning. So that would be the only problem uh, that I would see saying that you can still apparently play sports for the high school. My sister was an All-American 
uh, softball paid for her college. Okay. And she started out as a homeschooler playing at the public school. And then later in high school, she started going to school there. Um, she's a phenomenal athlete. It paid for a four year education at a private school. So I, you know, you've got the freedom. Yeah. There were times, uh, in, I think in her probably middle school years that yeah, you would show up for your weight training at one part of the day and come back for practice. It's an adjustment. If you're not sitting there at school all day, um, some kids do, but yeah, there's a way this is just a, another Avenue to explore. Wow. And I think too, like, and what I'm learning because I was public school and I made fun of, homeschoolers and their moms and all of that for a long time. We're easy targets. And and anyway, uh, and so I think I win. I'm just going to speak for myself, but I'm totally pointing the fingers at everyone else that was public schooled. You learn to think in a box, you know, and I took a career path in engineering and really started questioning everything. You know, it was there that I really learned the critical thinking and the uh, problem solving on another level. And then then I kind of like looked back on my everything and I'm like, holy cow, like everything was not what I thought it was. And in high school, I'm like, you know, uh, homeschool kids, you know, you're missing this or whatever. And then now as a parent, I'm like, man, I was so ignorant of, of so many things. And I played football as a sinner at 155 pounds, I was terrible. I think looking back, they said, Oh, Alton, he's a leader and he's practically our cheerleader out on the field the whole time. So He'll keep, this is why you're so messed up. You had your <laughs> private parts fondled throughout your whole high school career. Hey man, doesn't everybody want that? I mean, it's an enjoyable <laughs> thing. Actually, the quarterback that fondled my privates, John, went on to play for the Navy, and uh, it's actually really good. And uh, anyway, <laughs> what I realized through that, and not being a great offensive lineman, apparently at a buck fifty-five, I'm like, realized that some people had wrestling in their school. Now I do jujitsu. I love it. I'm not the best. I'm not the worst, but I'm much more suited for jujitsu than I am playing the offensive line. And so I think for me, what homeschooling allows and what I'm challenging my own kids right now, it's like, Hey, guess what? We can do whatever we want. And they're kind of stumped. Like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, shoot. If I had my choice when I was in high school, I would have raced motorcycles. That would have been like my extracurricular activity, but they didn't offer that in my like redneck city, unfortunately, or Did they have a fishing team? like, do you want to play football? I'm like, yeah. So I think <laughs> there's other options too. Like it doesn't have to be baseball or football. It, it can be a lot of things. So Barbara, Tell us about your book, Olive, right? Is the name of it? Yep, that is the name of it. So what does your book teach us about public school versus homeschooling that, that maybe we haven't asked you or, told, or you told us? Well, I would say that the biggest thing that this book uh, shows, because it is fiction. I mean, I'm not going to pretend that it's a how-to. It's, it's a fiction story. But the, the window that I think that it gives into homeschooling versus public school is the power of the environment at home that um, the way you set up your home is an, ed- is an education. And that's what um, I think, you know, my character is experiencing a lot of medical complications that probably, you know, most of these kids aren't, but it's written from her perspective. And so we don't know the name of her disease. We don't know the name of her parents because she doesn't. We only know what she knows. And so it shows uh, through her eyes, we see a lot of the commonalities. So I think that there is something in reading this, um, and it's probably my favorite feedback that I've gotten on the book, actually, is having people say, I'm going to change how I do my home. It could feel like that. Even at a young age, allowing your kids to be, you know, playing with your measuring cups while you're in the kitchen, they're learning stuff. They're learning how to think, and that can apply as they get older and you're getting into the school years also. Interesting. Huh. So where, where can we find the book? So you can uh, go onto my website, 
barbarabrandline.com. Nothing like it sounds like. I'm assuming it'll be spelled out here. Uh, you can get it off of Amazon. Um, you can get it from my publisher, Atmosphere Press, and at any of your favorite local bookstores. Sweet. Make sure you wear your mask if you're going to go into that store, though. <laughs> or if you don't, make sure to say that the author told you not to. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So is, is there an audio version for people like John who don't know how to read? <laughs> and who don't like listening to audiobooks? That's what I'm working on right now, actually. I would like to record it as an audiobook, but yeah. no. I, you can get it as a Kindle if that's your thing. All right. I, well, you've, I, I think you've got a great, a great voice for reading it. So if you're going to get Thanks. an audio, you should totally do it yourself, I think. Yeah, I think I'm so cheap, it. I'll have to. <laughs> I can hire someone else. So yeah. So I, I guess let's let's do this. I think I've got enough uh, feedback for me. So let's do the deciding factor. Does does homeschooling offer something that public schools can't offer? Now it's time for our deciding factor. Okay, so I kind of had my mind made up before we started this show. And then I started drilling you about your questions, and then you had your option C's that you decided to throw in my face. <laughs> so it kind of kind of screwed me over there. You know, my biggest thing is was the social part and how I feel like my kids or any kid needs to really have that social part, especially seeing some of the kids that have committed suicide around here after COVID hit and everything. The problem with that one is I think that happened so abruptly, right? They go to spring break, come back, and everything's gone. Now you got to adjust your life. I think that plays a different role in stuff like that. The next was is, you know, I, I don't think I'm fit to teach my kids the way they should or need to be taught. You did obviously show me that there's – different options and maybe I can still do it even if I don't think so. Then it was like, okay, well, I can't afford to not work during the day and focus on them. And, and, and I think, you know, financially my wife needs to, to be working too and she can't teach it during the day. You came up with your option C for that one. So thanks again. <laughs> the biggest kicker though was my sports. I didn't think you were going to have a way around my sports. <laughs> and then you blew my mind with the fact that they still should have an option to play for the school district because you're still paying your taxes instead of paying yourself, right? So I honestly think that homeschooling does show to be a pretty valid option in many different ways. So is it for everybody? Probably not, but that's not the question. The question is, does homeschooling <laughs> offer something better than pri uh, public schools? My answer is yes. They obviously have better options and better things for our kids, especially in a political-driven motivation crap that's going on in this world. And, of course, COVID being the mask issue, so... I gotta say, you you changed my mind, Barbara. I mean, it. I, I, I was a, I was gonna be a stubborn <laughs> jerk and hold my ground. <sighs> well, you officially know what it's like to be married to me. Sorry about that. That's <laughs> my husband hates the option C thing. <laughs> I'm gonna use that from now often. I'm gonna say, Alton, option C though, and you're gonna know what's mm -hmm. up. Sure, yeah, man. it's it's pretty useful. I do. My youngest daughter does that actually, and it's sort of annoying. You can be like, "Hey, I need you to pick up your toys and uh, you know head to bed." She's like, "Or I could pick up this toy and then get a piece of licorice and head to bed." And you're like, "Where do you? Oh, you come from me." That's let's let's change from. it. Instead of option C, we call it the Barbara B. I'm gonna Barbara B your butt next time, buckaroo. <laughs> I've never been a verb. That makes me happy. <laughs> So, so I guess obviously fill us in on, on your thought on this deciding factor. Yeah, obviously I'm here because I think that everybody listening can have something better for their family. Um, it probably needs to be said because it's something that I've been asked. Uh, what about parents that are abusive? What about families? And you made a good point here that I'm not saying that this is for everyone. 
if you are going to physically hurt your kid homeschooling them, walk yourself to jail. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm not saying that you should be homeschooling. And, but I would also say that there is, uh, if you're going to do this, and I think that you should at least think about it, um, find your community. Because that is something that, quite frankly, all of the vulnerable kids right now are missing, is that there is protection and community. And I would say you've got to have that in homeschooling, too. So, so yep, so, I'm, I'm saying do it. So, so you're saying there's three options. There's a homeschool option, the public option, or the Barbara B option, which is walk your ass to jail. Basically, that is what I'm saying. Do not pass go. Do not get the $200. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, if I have to be 100% transparent, I do use jujitsu on the children. They are great practice dummies, <laughs> offer very minimal resistance, great drilling partners. <clears throat> um, Although it's not really fair because there's many more of them. And for some reason they think that it's fair for them to be two, three, four versus one. Um, anyway, I digress. So obviously I've made the decision to homeschool. I think that public school offers a lot. Um, I think that I think you have to be ready to input a lot of effort into homeschool. That's what I'm finding. I think that that could be what breaks a lot of people. And I'm in um, a place where I can kind of make those adjustments easier than I know a lot of people do because I can do my own schedule and, and, and such. One of the things that I wanted to bring up during the podcast uh, that I forgot was uh, some like famous philosopher said, know thyself. And when I began to make that transition out of, I'm your factory worker, I'm your nine to fiver was throughout my realization of knowing who Alton was. So I was a, a technician doing engineering, high tech stuff, very clinical, methodical. I thought sales and marketing people were dweebs. And then when I started trying to uncover who Alton was, it turns out that like, although I have that problem solving capacity, really what my own peers saw me doing better than everyone else around me had nothing to do <laughs> with my like technical skills. And it had everything to do with getting to know strangers and having instant rapport with people and, uh, being their cheer cheerleader and inspiring them to like do awesome stuff for some reason. And through those realizations and embracing that, and like, I had no idea that that was who I was. And um, I think I told the story of how, <laughs> like I just randomly talk to strangers all the time. That's what I do is, you know, it's like, uh, what did you say? Barbara, like normal isn't weird or whatever it was. It was really epic and I can't remember it. But your life doesn't have to be normal to be good. Yeah. And and then I realized I'm like, yeah, that's normal, but they're like, no, it's not. And so when I started to embrace that more, my life got better. And so one of the things that we just did with our children in homeschooling is we're forcing them to take the the Myers Briggs personality test. Uh, which was recommended by this uh, homeschool unrefined podcast. They were like, do this, learn how your kid learns, study it, let them know. And then, you know, and so like my oldest just took it yesterday and her personality type is the, the debater, right? So she questions everything. She doesn't want to do work. She wants these big grandiose ideas, but doesn't want to actually do anything. And then how we work into that. And while you can understand the struggles of trying to homeschool a debater, um, like what an empowering time for her to be 11 years old and learn who she is. And Alton was 30 and still barely has a clue. And I'm like, man, you were so ahead of me, kid. And I'm asking, like, I, I said all that because I think that that's one of the hugest things for us as humans to understand is like, who am I? What are my gifts? And how can I give that back to the world? And if we can give our kids that at an early age, 
I'm like, I still can't spell for crap. I was trying to write down <laughs> fashion, y'all. Fashion. I own my own business, and somebody's telling me a URL, and I'm like, fashion. How the crap do I spell fashion? <laughs> I had to Google it. I was like, I only. I don't. So, I'm not a good speller, guys. Me neither. And sorry, but I don't care. I can still do other cool things. Like maybe this person has a website, but they don't have a podcast. So. I love that aspect about homeschool. So that's what I want to focus on with the question that I don't know if I answered, but I think it gives <laughs> parents an opportunity to really let their children know who they are. And I think that that's more powerful than learning some specific science or history or, you know, Barbara, you said we use your name as a verb. I was totally confused. I have no idea what you mean, um, <laughs> but that's okay. Cause like, I'm not going to go to English. I'm, Heather's got her bachelor's. Like she can cover that. I don't have to. Um, so that's what I'm really loving. You're going to handle PE like, is what you're going to handle, right? Yeah. I'm like, Hey, you want to do squats? Let's do it. hundred squats. Let's go. That's me. I can do squats. Can't spell fashion still, but do squats. Well, Barbara, this has been a fun show. You have entertained us like crazy. We probably didn't entertain anybody else, but you know, I'm happy. Hey, I laughed. Fun. I had fun. Yeah. <laughs> My so. cheeks hurt. Um, but uh, I'm going to do your website one more time. So it's your name fully spelled out. So it's www.barbarabraendlein. So it, her name sounds a lot different than, than the way it's spelled. And then also they can find you on Instagram by using your full name as well, right? Yes, that is true. My husband says that the last name is why he can't spell. It makes sense now, doesn't it? Yeah, same as pterodactyl. Yeah. Can't even speak. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in, never mind. What? <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, it's been really fun. I appreciate your time, your effort, and your, your stupid Patience. Barbara B option that you gave me the whole damn time. <laughs> Thank but, you, Barbara. Uh, <laughs> it's my pleasure. <laughs> All right, guys, y'all say bye. Bye Bye-bye. All right, thanks. This has been another episode of The Deciding Factor. Giving you food for thought on real-life issues. Be sure to click, like, and subscribe to this podcast. As well as all your big social media outlets, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Don't forget to check out our website at thedecidingfactorpodcast.com and give us comments and feedback. Until next time, stay safe and remember to keep an open mind.